Hello everyone, uh, my name is Jonathan Kroll. I am a undergrad currently studying mechanical engineering at the University of Texas at Arlington. And I'm taking part of the Pyre undergrad research under the guidance of my mentor, Ali Badran, who is currently studying at the University of Colorado Boulder. Uh, today I'm presenting to you our work in in-situ visualization of polymer to ceramic conversion using image segmentation. Why? Future generation aerospace, automotive and structural applications require materials with high strength to weight ratios that remain operable in high temperatures and under extreme conditions. Ceramic matrix composites are a good candidate to fill this role and subsequently polymer derived ceramics research in particular fiber and matrix fabrication becomes invaluable for the advancement of um, ceramic matrix composites development. Our research is focused on the polymer to ceramic conversion and the imaging of polymer infiltration and pyrolysis. I'd like to take this time to recognize that our work is in collaboration with Natalie Larson and Dr. Frank Zuck from the University of California, Santa Barbara. Um, our foundation of our image segmentation and work is found in the data sets that Natalie Larson produced for her PhD thesis. Um, in summary, Larson took a quartz tube containing around 4,500 sil uh, silicon carbon fibers, uh, filled it with a silicon carbide matrix precursor, and precured it at uh, 120 degrees Celsius for two hours before pyrolysis. The actual pyrolysis process took a little bit over 20 hours. Larson first took the sample from room temperature to 1,200 degrees C, then held it, and then cooled it back down to room temperature. During the pyrolysis process, Natalie Larson was able to take um, around 90 scans of the sample using CT scanning. Most people are familiar with CT scanning uh, for its applications in the medical field. It is used to create cross-sectionals of bones, lungs, and brains, and we're not really using it for any different goal. We're using it to create cross-sectionals of our sample to gain a unique inside view so that we don't have to cut, polish, and plate it um, like many traditional electron microscope methods. Um, the CT scans um, produce a series of x-ray slices that is then taken by a commercial program and compiled into a 3D render. The primary use of the CT scans is that we can do it during the pyrolysis process, which means we get a real time-ish view of what's happening to the sample during this process. While CT scanning is great, it's non-destructive, can be used during the process of pyrolysis, it also provides uh, its own unique set of challenges. Those being with these 90 data sets, oh, um, around 2,000 image slices each, it produces a lot of data, around three terabytes of it. You're never going to manually sift or analyze three terabytes of data, not even with a potential army of undergrads. There's also the problem that each CT scan of the sample was done at a different temperature and a different time. What means in one data set, you might have features such as crack propagation or poor networks that might not have been there in previous data sets. Also at the higher temperatures, the gray level contrast of fibers and matrix become virtually uh, identical. This means that traditional image segmentation methods produce um, subpar or completely unusable results. Also there's the problem with the, each sample scan takes around 12 minutes that means that you don't get to see a real time picture of the sample. You might have cracks that appear in the middle of a scan or that might simply appear out of nowhere when you don't really know where that started. So we'd like to automate the segmentation of these three terabytes of data. And we'd like to develop a method of extracting uh, enhanced visualization and quantitative data to better understand the crack and void formations due to either pyrolysis 
or due to shrinkage of the sample during pyrolysis. Um, we attack these challenges through the utilization of deep learning and convolutional neural networks. Um, the neural networks are models or algorithms that can be used for automatic, uh, automatic segmentation. They are first generated and then we can train them through a set of training images that we ourselves have manually segmented. Um, in our work, we used a set of 14 images. Each image takes anywhere between one to five hours to uh, manually segment. We feed this to our model and we allow it anywhere between one to three days of training. We then have a trained model and we can then apply that model to our data sets. Um, the model is very good. You can train it to recognize different phases, different features in your samples. And it can also be used to label images with virtually no gray level contrast that might even be hard for a human to really tell the difference between fiber and matrix. Um, I say here that we have around 87% inference accuracy after 300 iterations. But what does 87% accuracy really look like? Um, it looks like this. So you can really see that the AI has done a pretty good job. You can see very clearly defined the fibers, the pores, and even sometimes the cracks within the core sample. But you'll also notice sort of these floating bits and hanging edges off of the sample. That's the inaccuracy. That's the AI labeling uh, phases and features that it thinks are there, but really aren't. And this is really the indicator that while deep learning and neural networks are great and it reduces the amount of work that's needed to be done, AI segmentation is not an end all be all. You will still need to end up putting a lot of work into these images to clean them up, to make them presentable, and to really get that data that you're looking for out of them. And this, is, this has been the brunt and the largest part of our research. It's the largest time sink. Um, however, we have been lucky enough that we have enough time to actually do some quantitative analysis. Um, so on the left and right here, we have of different data sets, the areas of pores versus slice index. Um, all that's meaning is it's a depiction of the different area of your pores over the sample. Um, by inspection, you can very clearly see that there are sometimes dips of that area before large increases. If you would imagine an hourglass, this is like a very small area of the hourglass before flaring into a larger cavern or a larger pore. This indicates that during that initial polymer infiltration cycle, that the either the polymer was too viscous or the fibers orientation or placement got in the way, but it indicates that there was a certain choke point that didn't allow for the polymer to infiltrate properly or completely. Um, we can use this analysis sort of to produce characteristics and to produce a way of maybe even a secondary phase of infiltration that would allow for a more complete and in turn a tougher sample of uh, uh, CMC. Here we have some quantitative analysis on the pore networks um, after pyrolysis. So this is around 428 degrees Celsius, which means it's actually just beginning to uh, turn into a ceramic. This we can analyze and we can look at the different connections between pore networks and crack propagations so that we can truly see 
where can we maybe fill in some gaps? Where are the predicted weak points of the sample if it were to be used? And how would this behave in a certain condition? Um, yeah, so there's still a lot to be done. As I mentioned, we had an 87% accuracy. This is pretty good, but it can definitely be improved upon by either more training a deeper model or simply by doing a different model for each data set. This would drastically increase the quality of data that can be extracted, but it would also pretty much ex exponentially increase the amount of time required towards the project. Um, there are many different ways that you can visualize the data or the, um, yeah, the data that you've essentially taken out of this. And in the development of this method, we are hoping to produce characterizations of certain neural, uh, of certain networks of pores or cracks that may benefit researchers in the future. Um, and there's also that real, once you know, the pandemic is over, there's the very real possibility that we can go back into the lab and continue to do physical experiments with our uh, samples because of CT scanning, we didn't have to destroy them to take a look at them. And we are really thinking about maybe a second phase of that polymer infiltration. Um, that is it for me. I don't know how questions will work. So thank you for your time. Thank you for your patience.